So the next thing I want to show you is I want to show you how you can take one type and embed it in another type. And at the end of this video, after I've shown you kind of how you do some cool stuff in Go, we'll, uh, we'll reflect a little bit on object-oriented programming and Go's approach to creating different data structures and being able to reuse different data structures in relation to other da data structures, inheritance, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll reflect on that and talk about that at the end of this video. But first, let's just see some cool things. So here's the code we had from the previous video. And now I want to create type secret agent. And a secret agent, you know, the underlying type will be a struct, but a secret agent is everything that a person is, right? So we're going to include everything that a person is. <laughs> and they also have a license to kill, which we'll, we'll just say is a bool, right? And so secret agent is a person with a license to kill. So I'm going to format that, just get it looking nice. Nice. And so that's the way you could take one type. So here I'm typing type person, which is a struct, and I'm embedding that type into another type, right? Into type secret agent. And so let's see what happens when we use that. So I'm going to just take all this code out here. And person one is now going to be a secret agent. And so we know that we have to use a composite literal. So there's our composite literal. We have the type and we have the curly braces. And we also know that when we create a struct with different fields, we need to name each of the fields. Well, this one here is the field's name, LTK, and it's a bool. This one, you do not give it a, field's na a field name up where you define your struct. You just put the type in there. Just put the type in there like that. But when you come down here, you do give it a field name. You say type, you say field person is of type person, and there are the curly braces. And then we're going to have a comma after it because after that, you put your next one, and our next one's going to be licensed to kill, and that'll be true because it's going to be James Bond, and we end with our trailing comma. And now inside this one, right, here's our composite literal for a person. Here's our composite literal. There's the, the type, and then there are the curly braces. Let's populate it with the val values. So we're going to come in here, and we have first, and that's going to be James. And then we have last, and that's going to be Bond. And then we have age, and that's going to be 32. Cool. So now let's uh, format all that, and we'll come down here, and we'll change this to secret agent. And we'll go secret agent, secret agent, secret agent, and uh, and we'll also do secret agent one dot ltk, and so I'm going to format that and run it. Nice. And so here's our secret agent, James Bond thirty two, license to kill is true, and here's where we use the dot nota notation to print out the name, the identifier's name, so the that's holding the value of that type secret agent. And, uh, and then the, the field name, so dot notation, just the field name. And you'll notice that these inner types, these inner fields of that embedded type got promoted. They got promoted up to this higher level, right? So these fields are part of that inner type, and they got promoted up to secret agent. We didn't have to do sa.person. That's kind of funny. Sa, I think, is like friend <laughs> in Spanish, or hey, what's up, sa? cousin maybe, you could also do it like this, sa.person.first. And so if you had some name collisions, like let's say that we had first here, and then we also had first here, right? And so we could put it up, I guess we'll put it right there. And uh, that could be a string. Here we have a name collision. Okay, I'm just kind of putting this in, just kind of FYI something collision. Right, And so we could specify, I want the name that is part of, I want first that is part of person, or I want first which is part of secret agent. And now that would print that out. Unexpected semicolon on line 26. 26. First, I need my comma. There we go. Format run. And uh, there we have something, collision, and James, which is this one, and then bond, which is the last, and age, and true. But if you don't have this, and you typically shouldn't, though maybe there is some situation where you'd want, you do not need to specify that this is part of the embedded type person, right? You don't have to go to the name spacing. You just go, you know, the inner type gets promoted to the outer type, and that's the way you talk about it. This is the inner type. Person is the inner type. It gets promoted to the outer type, which is secret agent. So the inner type, the outer type. So let's just format this and run it to make sure it all still runs. Program exited. That's kind of funny. It turned it all red. Usually that should be black. There we go. We got the black. 
All right, so that's uh, how you embed one type in another type. So let's take a look at the language specification and just read that. And then we'll also talk about OOP. But I think, because I like to keep these videos shorter when possible, we'll do that in the next videos. So this is just kind of an introduction to embedding types. It allows you to start doing some approximation of inheritance. And uh, we'll talk more about um, the specification and then also uh, inheritance and OOP and some thoughts on that in the next videos. Mm -hmm.